I hope before uh, I start my talk, I want to thank Guy for the music and Meg for your beautiful prayer, which pretty much was the synopsis of my entire talk. So thank you for that, Meg. <laughs> but I'm always, no, I'm always amazed though how that connection happens, you know, how, how God works. And it was a beautiful prayer. So thank you so much. And uh, what I'm talking about today, uh, the talk title is The Ribbon of God's Sea Passes Through Us. And I do have a PowerPoint. Um, and let's see. Okay, here it is. And so this is the, um, I love this particular slide because it just, it so to me is representative of what the talk is about. I don't know how many of you are familiar with Mark Nepo, but he is a poet and an author, and he has a book called The Book of Awakening, which is a daily reading book. And uh, I was reading this on September 14th, and I thought, oh, I love this. I've got to do a talk around it. So it was called Simple Like a Fish. And so this is his part of his reading. I've been a fish in search of bottom when I've surfaced, in search of surface when I bottomed. And the ribbon of God's sea passing through my gills is what I felt and thought and spoken. A simple fish nosing its way along the bottom is in itself a profound teacher. And like the deepest teachers, it doesn't even know it's teaching. Yet in its tiny efficient gill lives the mystery of how to live as a spirit on earth. As we all know, swimming, the smallest fish can take in water and its gills turn that water into, or actually they take the oxygen from the water through their capillaries and turn it into um, a way they can breathe. The question is, he says, what, is, what in us is our gills? our heart, our mind, our spirit, a mix of all three. Whatever it is, like the smallest fish, we must turn water into air in order to live, which for us means turning our experience into something that can sustain us. It means turning pain into wonder and heartache into joy. And from the revealing word, the breath of God, we're talking about right now breath, you know, what, what gives us life, what sustains us. The, deal, the revealing word says the breath of God, which becomes the soul of man manifestation, includes all emotions and energies that move in and out through the organism, just like he was talking about. And it's always designated as feminine. Psyche is the name of that subtle essence that flows in and out of the great heart center called in physiology, the cardiac plexus. The name psyche, which figures in Greek mythology, means breath, life. Psyche is represented as one of the three daughters of a king. These three daughters are spirit, soul, and body. Psyche is the soul in its many earthly experiences, in its failures, and in its successes. So for all of us, we have a lot of experiences in our lifetime. All of us here have navigated many situations, relationships, joys, sorrows, but something has moved us through all of that and sustained us, has moved us forward to this point in time. We have embraced it. We have prayed to it. We have ignored it. We have yelled at it, but it's always there. And for me, and what he was talking about as well, is that it's this ribbon of God in our inward sea. And it's also our willingness to examine what it is that sustains us and nurtures us, whatever those gills are for us, how we take our experience and create something that sustains us in life. So one of the things that... Um, 
I also came across this, this first part is reading heavy, <laughs> but um, another person I love is Howard Thurman. I don't know if you're familiar with him. I know, I think I even did a whole talk on this one time. In his Meditations of Heart, he talks about the inward sea. So he and Mark Nippo have kind of um, come together at this point. And he, I want to talk about the inward sea for a moment. When he, in this reading I'm about to read for you, he's talking about a place that's just for us. It's a place where we don't have other people's beliefs. There are no limitations on what we think or how we feel. It is a place where everything that comes into this, in, into this altar that he's going to talk about, this inward sea, is our authentic selves. No pretenses, no ego. It is us just raw. And this is what Howard Thurman writes. The inward sea. There is in every person an inward sea. And in that sea, there is an island. And on that island, there is an altar. And standing guard before that altar is the angel with the flaming sword. Nothing can get by that angel to be placed upon that altar unless it has the mark of your inner authority. Nothing passes the angel with the flaming sword to be placed upon your altar unless it be a part of the fluid area of your consent. This is your crucial link with the eternal. Only for us. This is where we find our gills. And what I love about it is that nothing gets passed without our inner authority or consent. So if we try to bring something in there that is not truly authentic, it won't be there because this is where we're honest. He talks about it later, that our love is our love, our hate is our hate, our joy is our joy, our sorrow is our sorrow, we are authentic. This is where we come to be honest with ourselves because without it, we can't really figure out what sustains us. If we're always on that, dancing on that edge of distraction and not allowing ourselves to be fully present to what is really going on, and to that inner Christ. Because we do know that no matter what we've gone through, there is something that has moved us through. Maybe because we felt we had to, maybe because we didn't have a choice, but there's something that always gets us through. And it's gonna be different for everybody. Um, and we will have things in common for sure, but there are other things that we'll probably not have in common. Because there is that place where we tell ourselves the truth. And it's a place where I said as a, it's authentic and it's maybe even a place where we can talk to ourselves in a way that we can't be in our outer life. Maybe we're too frightened or we're afraid that people won't understand, but it is a place that we need to go. And it's not exactly meditation. It's more reflection, guided meditation, guided reflection, I should say guided by something greater than ourselves, which I like to call God, spirit, source, whatever it is for you. Because when we reflect, we, we come to a place where we are able to define what we really want. And most of us, it's to love and to be loved and to belong. Uh, and it's where we nurture our soul, our spirit, or our body. Because when we're at our altar, we allow ourselves to feel that ribbon of God's love flowing through us, knowing that whatever we're feeling, whatever we're going through, it's okay. We're being human. We have emotions that we're not proud of. We have thoughts we're not proud of. But when we look at them and we examine them and we forgive them, we can heal them. And oftentimes we don't see things clearly. And so we pray to see things more clearly, to see things differently, and we pray for guidance. So I don't know how many people here um, see things exactly as they did when they were 20, <laughs> but I certainly don't, and I don't think you do either, because we have that gift of hindsight. And 
for me at least, when I was 20, I thought I knew pretty much everything. And now at my age, I have come to the conclusion that I probably know nothing <laughs> because there is so much, so much deeper, so much wider, so much everything that I don't understand. And I like the mystery. I like the fact that there is so much I don't know because that comes from a spirit, not ego. And then uh, not that I don't get into ego, but when I don't, it's my, I'm much happier. So what my, uh, Mark Nepo was referring to was wanting to surface when we're at the bottom and, and to go deeper when we're at the surface. So we're living life here. And when we're living life here, we want to go deeper. But sometimes when we go deeper, we want to go up to the surface to bring it up to the surface. Because if we were to stay at the surface, we would miss the spiritual treasures that are when down below in the deepest part of our soul. And if we only stay there, we're not able to bring those treasures up to, other, to ourselves and to others and to share them. And to be able to take that out into the world, that love, that understanding out into the world. So it is the motion of diving and surfacing that we have balance and vision. And so um, an example, okay, an event, a situation, an illness, an addiction in your life that you used to think was, an, was a curse or it's un, it was unfair. Maybe it even drove you to despair on the surface. But diving down deep, you find the treasure. Maybe it's compassion. Maybe it's restoring your relationship to God. Maybe it's seeing your part of the situation more clearly and asking, forgiving yourself and asking for someone else to forgive you. But in that same situation, you have renewal. Your breath, your understanding is sustaining you in a new way. For those of us who are in recovery, I think we can also pretty much agree that what I, I'll tell you my story, which is that I thought it was a curse and I didn't know why I had been given this affliction. And it is now my greatest treasure because I would not have the compassion that I do. I would not have surrendered at the level I surrendered if I had not gone through that. And I hope I can share my experience and my hope with other people. And I think every single one of you has an experience like that, something that you thought was, why am I going through this? Why is this happening to me? But then you dig down and you go deep and you're at that altar of your consent and you are given the answer. This is why. This is why you're going through this. This is the blessing that was hidden from you on the surface, but this is what is sustaining you now. And so we honor that and we allow ourselves to be fully human and fully divine. Because when we listen, really listen, our life will speak to us. When we look at our, the breath of our life, especially for those of us who are older, and we see there's a common thread. There's a common thread through everyone's life, I think. Um, it could be an interest. It could be um, how you deal with things. But we really start listening and seeing that ribbon of God in all of our situations. And we listen to that still small voice. And we take that experience and we place it on our altar of truth. And it becomes our inner island of peace where we can always go to renew and transform and evolve into a new and deeper understanding. So one of the stories that I know I've told you before, but it just so perfectly illustrates um, what we're talking about today is, and the basic point of the story is to see beyond the obvious, to listen with our heart, because compassion emerges. Um, it's a story that I'm telling on my friend, Dennis. Dennis was a classmate of mine in seminary. 
and someone who I just absolutely love, a very sensitive and deep soul. And he used to be an ER doctor. And one time he was in the ER and this man was screaming and yelling and he was so upset and people didn't know whether he'd be violent, whether they were in danger. Somebody was ready to call the police. Other, some of the bigger, burlier guys were coming forward. They were going to, you know, take him down or whatever they needed to do because he was really acting out. But my friend Dennis, in a moment of clarity and divine guidance, as he says, he saw something different. He saw a man who didn't want to be violent, but he saw a man who was in anguish. And so he said to him, stop, I, to the people that were about to approach him. He said, you know, I can tell you are so upset. I can tell you are in so much pain. Why don't we go in this room? And I really want to hear what you have to say. I really, really want to know what is going on with, within you that is causing you so much pain. And so as it turns out, and I always cry when I tell this story, um, the man's girlfriend had been in a car accident and they weren't allowing him to see her. And he wanted to let her know he loved her in case she died. That's all he wanted. He just wanted to see her and tell her he loved her. And so my friend Dennis made that happen. But when we go into that inner part of us, when we allow ourselves to be fully human and see our warts and to see the things that, that are painful, it opens a door to compassion. And then when we see that in someone else, we go, I know, I know what that feels like. I know what that is. And it's not what everybody else thinks it is. So I'm going to reach out and I'm going to approach this differently. I'm going to see the Christ in that person. And we're going to talk Christ to Christ. And I love that story because I think especially nowadays, it's so easy to get upset. And I know I'm right there with everybody else. <laughs> with some of the things I get angry and um, I don't know, just frustrated with. But I'm learning every day a little bit more how to see something different. And there are days when I feel miserably and I am back in my resentment, <laughs> but I don't like how that feels. I don't want to be there. So I am creating an intention and asking for divine guidance on how to see things differently. Because when we do listen to ourselves and get honest, we do find the good, the bad, the ugly, and the beautiful. And we all have all of it. And so what we do is we find what it is that moves us forward, that takes us out of whatever that upset is and brings us into the light of spirit. I love how Meg talked about the upper room. And that to me is where the altar is and the, this beautiful island of peace that we can go to. And we identify what it is and we nurture that, whatever that quality is. For some, it's going to be um, love in all of its forms, whether it's parental or sibling or partnership or friendship. And others, it's going to be a, a connection to creation. Maybe it's service, maybe it's gratitude, maybe it's compassion, maybe it's faith. But we all have those 12 powers within us of faith and strength and love and understanding and imagination and on and on that we can call upon to help us navigate and help us bring us closer to the truth of our being and to be able to be the best expression of that inner Christ that we can be. So we try to identify it, love in all of its forms. Some of us want partnership as we can see with the two little fish cuddled in this beautiful, beautiful, um, I can't even, I don't know if that's coral or what it is, but it's gorgeous. Or maybe it's family like the dolphins represent. Maybe it is community as this beautiful school of fish represents, or maybe it is just wanting to be alone and the shark is definitely letting us know 
it would like to be alone <laughs> or has something to eat, hopefully not us. So we identify it and we're honest about it. And we take these qualities. For me, I know a lot of it's been service. You know, that has been a path for me that has gotten through me through a lot of situations. And I'm, re I'm looking at it now. I'm looking at a lot of the parts of my life that have sustained me to be able to see if this is still what I want. Is this still going to move me to the deeper understanding of where I want to be? And I keep surfacing, you know, look around and then you dive deep, deep again. And then you come back up and you take it out into the world. But we all need to go through that so that we're not living these lives of just habit and distraction. And one of the things that um, I love to, of course, we're going to go back to Rumi here, is that, and I'm going to read this, a joy, a depression, a meanness, some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all because that is what we need to do, to not force or pretend something doesn't exist. Because sometimes I think we can do that. Like, and I know I've used this as an example, like people who say, no, I'm not angry. No, I'm fine. Nothing's bothering me. And you know, that's not true. But when you admit it to yourself, yes, I'm not fine. I'm really upset about this. And I'm upset about this for whatever reason, or I was really touched by this. And I was touched by this because of whatever it is for you. So what I'd like to do now is for us to take that into meditation. So I invite you to get comfortable in your chairs, to put both feet on the floor, to take anything that's in your lap and just set it aside. And also, if there is anything that's upsetting you right now, or it's going to keep you from being here, Imagine it in a package and that you just set it outside your door and you can pick it up again when the meditation's over. But what I invite you to do is to identify the thread that sustains you, that is, that is your gill, that is what is in your gill that allows you to take your life experience, whatever it might be, and to make that into something that sustains you, that identifies you with that ribbon of God of love and peace and wisdom and all of the qualities and beyond that we know is the allness of God. What allows you to move forward in faith and compassion? Or... Is there anything you are unwilling to put on your altar in that beautiful island of peace? And what would happen if you did? And another thought, if you're willing to go there, um, is what in this community sustains you? What is it in this community that your experience of this community, what is it? that converts to life-giving breath for you in your life in this community. So we'll take that into a few moments. Uh, we won't call it meditation, we'll call it reflection for just a few moments in the quiet. And if you find something painful come up, breathe into it, just breathe right into it.
When you're ready to bring your awareness at to this meeting, then thinking with COVID and all of the things that have been happening, that we're not ever really going to be going back to normal. We're not going to be back going back to the way things were. Um, I look at Lake County and I see what's happening here with the drought and all the other things. And I know it's not gonna be the same. So it's really crucial to find out what is it about where I live and who I am that and my relationship with what I call God will sustain me throughout all the changes, throughout all of the upsets and all of the sometimes disturbing incidents that happen in our lives. So we get to create something new. We get to evolve. But we need to know what grounds us before we do. And we'll find new ways to evolve. But I'd like to close with um, a poem by Mark Nepple called The Appointment. What if on the first sunny day on your way to work, a colorful bird sweeps in front of you down a street you've never heard of? You might pause and smile, a sweet beginning to your day. Or you might step into that street and realize, wow, there are many ways to work. You might sense the bird knows something something you don't, and wander after. You might hesitate when the bird turns down an alley, for now there's a tension. Is what the bird knows worth being light? You might go another block or two, thinking you can have it both ways. But soon you arrive at the edge of all your plans. The bird circles back for you, and you must decide which appointment you were born to keep. Each decision brings a gift. There are no wrong answers. Thank you. You know, with our faith and our love, we know that we'll get through everything and we'll get through it together. And uh, I was reading this one Zen story uh, about these two Buddhist nuns, and they said, let's get enlightened together. And so I think it is community for me in a lot of ways and connection with people, but we still have community, whether we can be together physically or not. We still have the love of God within us, whether or not we can demonstrate it as readily through hugs as we would like, but it's always there and it's always there to sustain us. And so we are so very lucky to be able to have each other and to have the teachings that really do help us see things in a new and different way. And so many blessings to everyone and lots of love. Thank you.